Hey everybody, welcome back to another vlog. Thanks for joining us. We'll start out this one by talking about Fire Academy 19-2 Hell Knight. And if you follow South Metro on Instagram, you already got a little bit of a taste of what happened that night. It's a great opportunity for the recruits to test out all of the various skills that they've learned in Academy and really take on more of a leadership role and, and do the things that they're gonna be doing very soon on the streets. So it started off in the afternoon and there was a bunch of different calls. It included a water rescue, responding to a bunch of EMS calls because medical emergencies are what we respond to most. And then of course there were fire calls vehicle extrication uh, and the recruit training officers had a little bit of fun with the recruits during that time so it wasn't all work there was a lot of enjoyable stuff to do they had a movie playing in the auditorium so they could kick back and relax just like they were at the fire station they played with a football uh, played various sporting games while they were there in between calls and then responded like they would normally do at a fire station and it lasted for hours and hours well into the night uh, when it was dark and super cold out uh, but it's a really great opportunity for the recruits to test out their skills. <laughs> Engine 48, engine 49, engine 50, tower 50, medic 48, medic 49, respond to a confirmed residential structure fire one, east main street. Repeating for engine 48, engine 49, engine 50, tower 50, medic 48, medic 49, respond to a confirmed residential structure fire one, east main street. Nope. Engine 48, engine 49, Thank you. 
On Tuesday night after work, it was my turn to be on call and there were two calls that were pretty much back to back uh, that I went out to. So we'll start with the first one. Engine 36, Medic 36, MVA structure involved, map page A, B, 28, C, 72 to 45, middle in place, rescue 34, power 32, Medic 18, Battalion Chief 1, Safety 18, Metcom Ops 3, MVA structure involved. So right around 421 in the afternoon, our firefighters got a call that a car had run into the back of a home in Castle Pines on Middleham Place in the 7200 block. So when firefighters first got on scene, they really couldn't see anything from the street area there facing the front of the house. That's because all of the damage was in the back. So when they got back there, they found that there was damage on the fence and that there was a car in the living room space of this home that had actually gone off a road about 1,000 feet away from there, went through a golf course behind the home, crashed through the fence and then into the living room where a homeowner was sitting, sitting there with her dogs just feet away from where this car crashed through her home. Luckily, they were not injured in the home uh, and the dogs were okay as well, but the driver was um, kind of passed out after that accident happened and our paramedics were able to take that driver, transport them to the hospital to uh, kind of look at them more in depth and make sure they were okay. Um, but a pretty crazy scene. We did have media there, so um, we told them what was going on. And of course, neighbors were wondering what happened as well. Ham Place, a sea of lights flooded Meredith Wildman's neighborhood. I'm shaking and it didn't even happen to me. A car smashing into her neighbor's home just before sunset tonight. Inside, there was a woman that was sitting on the couch, one of the homeowners. South Metro Fire says the car missed her by just inches. I can't imagine what was going through her mind when the car just like goes through her living room wall. Police believe the driver had a medical emergency, causing his car to go off the road over this golf course fairway and into that family's home. So for them to go over that road and then through the golf course, over sand traps, through a fence, and then through somebody's house is crazy. Tonight, that woman and her dogs are okay. The car towed away, the home boarded up as an investigation continues. It's crazy that that happened to her. I can't imagine what she's feeling. Now, the driver of that car was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. Again, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office believes he likely had some sort of medical emergency that caused him to lose control of the car before crashing into that house. At this point, they do not believe drugs or alcohol played a role. We're live tonight in Castle Pine. Seven Krugel, Fox 31. So the second call on Tuesday night was for a large fuel spill, and this came in in Lone Tree right near Station 34, but different crews came to the scene because 34s was not in their immediate due area because they had been at that other call with the car into the home. So uh, when crews got on scene, they had reports that a driver had backed their car into one of the gas pumps and it started a small leak. Well, when they got on scene, they found that the fuel had started spilling into a nearby storm drain and could possibly be going into a waterway as well. Luckily, the fuel spill did not make it into that nearby waterway, but any sort of hazardous material situation, we need to bring out uh, what we call is the hammer, is one of our specialty hazmat units. And they come there, they are monitoring the gas levels in the air to make sure it's safe for community members to be around there and to uh, absorb that spilled fuel with uh, some quick absorbent material on the ground. So they st stayed on scene for a while to make sure that that area was safe. Both of these calls that Connor responded to are special operations incidents and they require specially trained people and some of our more advanced fire apparatus and equipment. And if you want an in-depth look at those apparatus, you can go over to the Fleet Friday playlist, check out Rescue 34 and Hazmat 38. For those of you who may not be in the Denver metro area and don't see our local news, 
Our local Fox 31 News Channel did a story with South Metro Fire Rescue about firefighters battling cancer. And right now, South Metro has nine personnel that are battling cancer. And of course, as most of you probably know, there's a much higher rate of, of firefighters getting cancer and also dying from cancer. So it's a really serious problem. We've been taking some proactive steps at South Metro to prevent our members from getting cancer in the future. We will link that story to this video so that you can watch for yourself and hear what our firefighters have to say and describe the cancers that they're dealing with. Thank you for all of the great feedback that you gave us on the Brush Engine 39 Fleet Friday video. It's actually been shared in a lot of places, including Australia, where we heard from wildland firefighters who are battling historically large wildfires there. Our firefighters do deploy nationwide, and we've had some uh, questions about how far they've gone. They've stayed in the United States, but they have literally been all over the place on fires, and they're not always available to do that. It takes the firefighters uh, listing their availability for the next 14 days before they can put the engine available in the nationwide system to be deployed. So it's not all the time that we can be called, but just when our firefighters volunteer to put their personal and professional lives on hold to deploy. <laughs> all right, everybody, this is definitely my favorite time of the week. Connor could really go <laughs> <too>. either way. <laughs> <laughs> They're like bug eyes. It is time for patch shout outs and thank you so much for sending these in. The first one I have is from Estonia, Connecticut from the fire marshal's office. Pretty cool. Sweet. And then I've got Rapid Valley, South Dakota fire. Also really cool. Awesome. Okay, so these next two are from a very special little boy in our district. His name is Hank O'Brien, and uh, he wants to be a firefighter one day, mm -hmm. and uh, has been to I think almost all of our fire departments, uh, fire stations in our in our department. So um, the first one is from Almas Park Fire Department, and that is in the city of Almas Park in San Antonio, Texas, as well as Alamo Heights Fire Rescue, and that one is in. Uh, Alamo Heights, Texas. So thank you so much, Hank, for sharing those with us. Yeah, thank you so much. We really appreciate everything that you guys do for us. You help make our channel awesome by all of your feedback, so we can't thank you enough for that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that. Click the button. Yeah, it's somewhere. <laughs> we'll put it somewhere. And uh, keep leaving us your comments. If you haven't followed us on our other social media channels, please do that as well. And we will see you next time. See you guys. <laughs>